So over here in my Raspberry Pi virtual machine, we have the Magic Mirrors homepage. If you want to go and download the source code for it, we'll go here. You can click on Go to Repository. And this is the GitHub repository for Magic Mirror. Here you can download the project, get it installed, and you can find all the modules for it. So to get started, you can scroll down a little bit and you'll find his table of contents with all the instructions and everything you'll need to get started. And to install it, it's really simple. And there's just a one, uh, one line bash command that you can run. And if you'd like, you can also do manual installations. But for the sake of simplicity, this is going to be able to work for you just fine in Raspberry Pi. And doing it manually will work just the same, but you can do this if you're on something else that's not a Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and copy the bash command. Open up your terminal by either clicking on the terminal icon or pressing the shortcut Control alt t Paste in your command. It'll run. It'll detect that we're running a Raspberry Pi, despite the fact that this is a virtual machine. Uh, so go ahead and type Y for yes. Let it run. It'll take a minute or so, depending on... Uh, your internet connection and your Raspberry Pi and everything. And here you'll see that it's asking if you want to use PM2 for auto starting the magic mirror, which means that whenever the computer starts up, it'll auto boot the mirror so you don't have to worry about connecting to it to start it up manually. So go ahead and type Y again, click enter, let it install again. So you can see that it finished and it installed, but we're not done yet. So this is the mirror itself with uh, all of the preset modules minus one because I actually pre-configured the uh, config file for it to test this before recording. So to go ahead and close this, we can hit uh, Control M. It'll minimize it. And, um, you'll see here, it'll say, do you want to disable the screensaver? Meaning obviously that um, when the computer is sitting for long enough, it doesn't shut the screen off or it doesn't you know, go to the Raspberry Pi's built-in screensaver. So go ahead and type in Y again, click enter. It's done, right? So you can see now that Magic Mirror is open. If we try to close it, it'll reopen because it's running. <clears throat> so if we want to, right now, you can see that if we reboot the machine, start up, you'll see that it now boots with the Magic Mirror splash screen. It'll run all of the startup commands. It'll boot to the dashboard. And after a second, it'll load the Magic Mirror module and we can continue from there. So it booted up. Right now, we want to run through the files real quick. As I remember where it is. So as you can see, it downloaded it to Magic Mirror, which is in our Pi directory under home. And in here is all of our <clears throat> um, files and settings. So if we want to, we can go to the config folder. And we have config.js, which we can open up inside of any text editor you'd like. You can even do this remotely through SSH or VNC Team Viewer. Uh, and here, what we really care about right now uh, is this config variable, which is the whole file. Uh, so here we can change the address that this is located on. So you can change it to a specific address if you don't want it on the local host, or you can change the port. Uh, you can change the IP whitelist, which what you do if you add it here, you'll be able to access this because technically it's running a bit of a server on the Raspberry Pi. So if I added in, you know, my uh, my host machine's IP address, I would be able to access the smart mirror from the Raspberry Pi on my personal computer. But for the sake of this and probably what you would like, just leave this all default and blank. Uh, here we can see units is metric. We're going to actually change that to Imperial because we're in America. Uh, language is English. Time format I prefer 12. 12 hour time frame to preference. Uh, modules, so this is the heart of the project, right? So modules, we have our alert, we have our uh, update notification, which tells you uh, when there's an update to either any of your modules or the core uh, Magic Mirror program. Uh, there's clock, there's the calendar, complements, which we can see right there, high sexy. Uh, the current weather, the weather forecasts, which um, I actually had hidden before. We're also missing the weather key here. So the weather's not going to show. Uh, the news feed at the bottom, which I believe is <clears throat> cut off because I'm in a virtual machine and it's not exactly tall enough. Uh, news feed, again, hidden. So we want to show you how this works. I can take out the clock, right? So if I add in a comment, if I comment out this line, and for People who don't know any programming uh, in JavaScript, a slash and an asterisk followed by an asterisk and then another slash uh, is a multi-line comment. So anything inside of them becomes commented out. 
So if I save this, right, let me go back to the mirror and we reload it with Control R, you'll see that the clock is gone. If I undo it, go back, reload it, it comes back. So if we want to, we'll open up our internet browser. We can go to uh, the Magic Mirror uh, web page again, and we can go to the modules section now. And from here, he has a whole list of modules that are developed by the community. Right, so you can get things that are related to news and your religion, uh, stock and finances. You can get things that are used for like monitoring, developing on the Magic Mirror itself. Uh, there's also ones that I like that are like niche things like getting Google Maps, you know, <clears throat> getting Google Maps uh, routes to work, tell you the traffic on the mirror so you can look at it to see it. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm showing you what we have. I'm actually going to get one that I have on mine, which is a daily Pokemon. What this does as a module, uh, it just displays a random Pokemon out of the 800 or so that exist as of the time of this recording. So uh, you can see this is what it would look like if we added it in. So installing modules is really simple. Uh, doing the exact same thing that we did uh, before, we take a terminal, and if we look at our directory using command ls, we can see that we have the magic mirror directory here. So we do cd for change directory into magic mirror. Right. And then again, you can see that we have a, no, a folder here called modules. So we're going to cd into that again. Right. Nope. Pretend that didn't happen. So in here, we can see that we don't have anything other than the basic uh, modules that are installed. So what we can do. Uh, as, as it says here in the instructions, is take this command, this git clone, and we can copy and paste it, let it clone it, and if we look again, you can see that it's now installed daily Pokemon. So we'll cd into that. And now in here, there's all the files and everything that he needs for it. Uh, and then we'll just run npm install. And what npm install does is it installs all the node modules that are dependencies for this project. So whenever you write any programs that involve um, JavaScript, React, Node, anything that involves Node, uh, you use Node modules and then to keep down on size because nodes, the Node modules folder can grow like massive in your projects uh, without even realizing it. So Node module folders are generally ignored when people push their projects to Git. So when you do download and clone the Git repository, you run npm install and it installs all the dependencies required for the project. Uh, keeps down on size and uh, it makes it easier to, and quicker to pull from the repo instead of having to pull hundreds of gigabytes. Okay. So now that that's done, um, you can see here that he has in his config file as a template, he's got the modules array, right? And then he has the module for daily Pokemon. So we're actually just going to copy this real quick. And we can see here, if we come down to the very bottom at the bottom here, at the very end of the array, uh, we make sure there's a comma in place. Don't forget a comma or we'll complain about it. We're just going to add a new line, paste in his template, format this a little bit. And so it's going to add in um, the daily Pokemon that we just added. It's going to put it in the top center of the mirror. And then this is the config configuration for the module. So we have uh, an update interval. It's going to update every 600,000 seconds. I, I don't know the math off the top of my head, but it's uh, I believe once a day. <clears throat> uh, it's going to start at Pokemon number four. Uh, it's going to end at 151, so Charmander to Mew. Uh, grayscale is true, no color. It'll show their types, the languages. This, the font size of their name might be important depending on the screen size that you're using. Uh, so from there, uh, actually, I'm going to just cut that out. So you'll see that if we go back to the Magic Mirror and reload it, I had a small error. Turns out 12 wasn't formatted right, so I'm just going to leave it as 24 for now. But you can see that Pokemon's not in here. So if we add in the module uh, and save it and reload it, it'll break because I forgot my braces. So if we surround the new component with brackets and save it and reload it, nope, more magic. Now we reload it, you'll see that it's loaded our Pokemon into uh, our Magic Mirror. And, and after you know 24 hours, 12 hours, however many seconds you set that up to run, it'll refresh. Or if I do it again now, it'll load into Pokemon.
So now, for the sake of, <clears throat> of you know personalizing your smart mirror, you do things like take out uh, the compliments. So you can either delete these lines entirely or just comment them out, like I will here. And we're going to change Pokemon from top center. So we're actually going to change this to bottom right. Right. And if we go back to the mirror and reload it, you'll see that things have moved. Uh, and there's one quick thing, which I'm sure most people care about, uh, rotating the screen, right? So if you have a mirror, you're generally going to want your mirror in, in portrait, not landscape. So we're just going to go back to the repository, go down to configuring your Raspberry Pi. And all of this should have been done in, uh, in the curl bash method that we did at the very start of this tutorial. But um, it does not rotate the screen by default, right? So if you want your... Uh, if you want your mirror to be vertical, not horizontal, we're just going to follow this command line here. So we're going to go back to this. We're going to sudo uh, and read our, our config file for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so nano is a, is a text editor that's built into most Linux systems. So we're going to nano uh, read our, um, our config file to this. You'll see that we're just going to add in these two lines. Uh, and this avoid warnings one is going to stop um, a rainbow colored cube from popping up on your <clears throat> uh, screen in case uh, your your power is enough. If you're running off a USB wall wart that doesn't give enough power. Uh, so we run that. And then uh, you'll see here he's got a list. So if we display it at rotate zero, it's just normal display. One is going to be 90 degrees, two is 180, and uh, three is 270. Uh, you might have to finish between 1 and 3, depending on how you put your screen into the wooden frame. But uh, it's just a simple change. So you could just rerun the, the pseudo nano method and change it from 1 to 3 based on when you put it. So then we're just going to reboot, and we should see that it's going to turn 90 degrees. One thing I forgot to show is that uh, one, of the, one of the modules on this, this Magic Mirror pro program is uh, obviously the calendar. And inside of its own calendar, um, Module is another array for specific calendars, and here is where you would add in your, you know, your personal calendar, your work calendar, what have you. Uh, so what you do is um, you will get your iCal or ICS URL for your calendar, and you can access this through the settings on Google Calendar um, on the website. I don't know how to do it through the app, or if you even can. But you'll go to the Google Calendar website. You will go uh, to settings, and you can go to share calendar and it can give you this URL in the form of a, an iCal, .iCal uh, URL. So when you come back, um, we'll come here, we'll close off this bracket to show that this is one, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this is one calendar in the array. You will do a comma, add in a new one, close that off. You can do symbol again, if you want to give it a symbol. Uh, and then in here, the URL colon quotation marks make it a string, and then you'll do you know your iCal URL. Right? You can take it from your Apple Calendar, your Google Calendar, Outlook, whatever calendar you use. Uh, just find the iCal or ICS uh, URL for sharing it, copy it, put it in here, save the config file, and then uh, just reload the mirror, and your calendar will show up. Uh, you can change. You know what it's called. This is called US headers, as you can see from the from the mirror. Uh, you can change it whatever you'd like. Uh, same thing with any other module. But from here, you can add in your own calendars, personalize it a little bit. So hopefully, you can see that through this, it's actually really simple to make this. It's just one command, and then you can go through, download as many modules as you would like, and place them how you'd like. Uh, and it's really simple. It's just one git clone, install no modules, configure your config right. Set it up as you like. Uh, thank you for watching, and that's all.